I'm so happy this is done. It took, it took from the beginning of May to the end of June. It, it was only two months, but it seems like longer. But it's done. Thank God. So I have wanted to upgrade my desk setup for a long time. Ever since I bought a MacBook Pro, I've been using it simultaneously with my iPad Pro, which didn't leave a lot of room on my desk. I wanted to revamp my whole desk setup in a way that would maximize my desk space without compromising my productivity and just look prettier. Because of the pandemic, at the time of this video, I'm still unemployed. So to fund this project, I've been selling all of my old tech, which is why I need to keep this as affordable as possible without compromising quality and I think I did a pretty good job. I'm going to be keeping a price telling in the corner so we can keep up with how much I spent and I won't be including things that I already had like my chair. When deciding on what to buy I was careful not to compromise quality for a lower price so everything on this list might not be the most affordable option however it was the most affordable option for all of the items that matched everything that I needed. And now I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process of me upgrading my desk setup. But first, let me show you what I'm used to working with. Okay, so I wanted to show you the setup of my desk currently and how just like basic it is. Um, so yeah, this is my work area. It's pretty crappy. So you know what? We're going to revamp it and make it look really nice. Ignore the boxes and the fan. They're just here temporarily. But this is what it usually looks like, you know. So this is my desk. I got this desk from Walmart maybe about two or three years ago. It wasn't very expensive. Um, if I can find a link of a similar desk so I can price it for you guys, I'll do that. Um, it's really basic. It's really small. It's about 35 and a half by 19 and a half. Yeah, not cute. I feel like everybody's getting a desk now because everybody's working from home. So desks are really expensive. So we're going to wait on that for a little bit. <laughs> So I know I said I wasn't going to buy any desks, but that was only because since so many people were looking for desks to start working from home, they were getting really expensive. But I kept looking and I was able to find something in my budget. Moral of the story, don't compromise and keep looking. I also have my switch right here. This is my basic dirty chair that I sit in and my dog. So this used to be my desk setup. This is just my iPad with the um, Zag Rugged Bug case, which is amazing. So it was great working on this just by itself um, on this desk, but then I got a computer. So working with the computer definitely crampened up the space a little bit more. I had less room to write things on paper or in a notebook, and uh, I would use my iPad to write things, but sometimes, you know, I just really want to write on a physical piece of paper. Um, I just felt really cramped and didn't have any, you know, arm room, and since because I'm not buying a new desk, I have to, you know, be inventive on how to get that desk space back. Over here is my storage area. It's pretty cramped. So yeah, this whole area just needs an overhaul. So we're gonna see if we can um, make this storage um, more ergonomic, um, a lot easier to get to, and just revamp it and make it look pretty. Other than my old desk just being used and abused, the main reason I needed a new desk was because working on two devices was just making the space way too cramped. I also wanted room to be able to use both devices and actually write something on physical paper, so I just needed a longer desk. The attached shelving unit also took up some of the leg room, which I needed, so that was another problem I needed to solve. Otherwise, this is a pretty good desk. It's pretty sturdy and it sits at a standard height. If you need something small to fit in a dorm room or a small home office, I definitely recommend this one. It sells for around $50 at Walmart and I'll link it below. Eventually, I found the Breton Studio Calais Retro Desk in the color blonde on sale for $99.99 from Office Depot. This desk is 21 by 41, which is a considerable jump from the 15 by 35 desk I originally had, but still small enough not to take up too much room. It has a grommet hole in the back as well as an area behind it for storing cords, which is also another great place for monitor attachment. The desk includes a three compartment pull out drawer, which is large enough to house more than one device my most used notebooks, and some cords and accessories. I love this desk. If you like the design of the desk, but don't like the price and don't need to mount a monitor, 
Target sells a similar desk for $80, and I'll link that one below as well. I really didn't see the need to get another chair because this chair is moderately comfortable and doesn't give me any problems. I bought this chair from Walmart a few years ago for somewhere around $50 or less. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the exact chair, but there are many options on sites like Walmart, Target, and Ikea that are super affordable. Being on the iPad and the computer all day had me constantly looking down, which gave me daily neck and back aches. So the first thing I got was a monitor. I wanted something that was small, would allow me to do a dual screen setup, and would allow me to play my Switch games on dock mode. I purchased this 24 inch LG monitor for $110 at Best Buy on sale. This monitor retails at $199.99. It is a gaming monitor, but works great as a computer monitor as well. It's got Full HD with IPS technology and also FreeSync, giving great refresh rates for my Switch games. I have noticed a bit of color variance, so if you'll be using it to edit, keep that in mind. If you're buying a monitor and are on a budget, I would recommend waiting until there's a sale. After purchasing the monitor screen, I realized that even though I could look up, the monitor was still too low and it took up a lot of valuable desk space. So I purchased a desk mount. That way it will be lifted off of the desk and I could still maximize the space. I decided to go with a Wally single monitor gas spring desk mount. I decided on using a gas spring mount arm rather than a static mount arm because the static mount arms can only move side to side and tilt up and down, while with a gas mount, you can not only adjust its height on the pole but also on the arm itself, giving you more height and viewing angle customization. It's super sturdy, and I can also position it off the desk, giving me even more workspace to use. This mount costs $45, but it's on sale for $40 as of today. To save even more desk space, I purchased an extra simple monitor arm from Wally for $21.99 and a laptop mount tray for $18. Now, my laptop would not only be lifted off the desk to save space, but it's also at eye level. Along with being elevated off the desk, I can also change the viewing angle of the computer by tilting the computer to mount and pivoting the mounting arm. The whole mounting system was about 85 bucks, so not really budget, but it was totally worth it. Like, look at that. It looked nice. To help with the neck and back pain caused from having to bend down to use my iPad, I purchased the Humix tablet stand for $25. This thing is super strong and its joints are not easily bent. It has rubber feet on the bottom to prevent scratching or sliding and folds down almost flat, so it's great for taking on the go. I also use it as a stand for my Nintendo Switch when using it in tabletop mode. Because the monitor doesn't have external speakers, I had to purchase some to listen to the audio of my games and the videos I was editing. I decided to get the Logitech C200s. They are stylish and affordable at $25 and don't take up too much space on the desk. They connect to the monitor directly and also have 3.5mm input and output jacks. These speakers are great for the price. You can adjust the bass to your liking and they get pretty loud. So if you have newer Mac devices like I do, you'll need to buy some type of converter or some type of USB-C hub. I use the VanMass 8-in-1 USB-C hub which you can purchase for $40. It has two USB-A ports, a 3.5mm headphone jack, an SD and micro SD card slot, 4K HDMI, and two USB-C ports, one for charging and one for data. It has a nice glass front and lights up when connected. It's also very compact and great for travel. Because I'm using a monitor and an elevated computer, I need a good keyboard and mouse combination. For my keyboard, I decided to go with a Logitech K380 that retails at $30. This keyboard has a comfortable weight and key travel. It is not rechargeable and is powered by two AAA batteries. It can seamlessly switch between three Bluetooth connected devices with minimal lag. It also has function keys that work with the Mac system. It's a little on the smaller side, but the keyboard is raised a tad towards the back, so there is no need for an armrest. The mouse I originally used with this keyboard is the Logitech Pebble M350. This mouse comes in four color options and can connect up to two devices, one by Bluetooth and one by USB receiver. So if you're using two devices, this one is perfect for you. It's also super quiet, and I prefer quiet mice over the super clicky ones. It only has one customizable button, but it is super small and portable and it's great for everyday use. I had to stop using this mouse because I actually have three devices to connect to, and switching the USB receiver whenever I needed to switch devices was a tad annoying, so I replaced it with a Logitech Triathlon M720, priced at $20 more. 
but I was able to get it on sale for only $10 more. And it's actually on sale on Amazon right now for less than $39. Not only does it connect to three devices like the K380 keyboard, but it has six customizable buttons and works with the Logitech Flow system, where you can copy and paste files that are on different devices. And this is something I didn't really appreciate until I got it. Being able to change the volume by pressing buttons on the side of my mouse and closing windows with the click of a button is very convenient. The mouse clicks are on the louder side, but it's more ergonomic design and increased capability makes it a better mouse overall. Because my USB-C hub disables the external sound on my iPad, which I primarily use to edit my videos, I needed to buy some Bluetooth headphones, which are relatively inexpensive. But the only con to that is I needed active noise canceling headphones, which are not. I already have some AirPod Pros, which have unbelievable noise canceling abilities. But after using them for like five to seven hours a day, I started to get ringing in my ears. So I had to get some on-ear headphones instead of some in-ear headphones. I eventually settled on the Tautronics Active Noise Canceling Headphones for $49.99. The headphones for the price point are pretty good and they're USB-C chargeable. The ANC is activated by a switch behind the left ear, which can also be activated when the headphones are not actively connected to a Bluetooth device. And it comes with power and volume buttons on the right. The outer lining is super plush and comfortable. The sound quality is pretty good too. And the last thing that was absolutely essential to my new desk setup is a lamp. A lot of the work that I do actually happens at night. Like for example, I'm filming at 3 a.m. right now. So I needed a small light that would light up some books and papers, but not light up the whole room. My old lamp took up a lot of valuable desk space. And it was also super harsh because you couldn't adjust the lighting. So in order to keep with my space saving mission, I decided to get a lamp that you could clamp onto the desk and had adjustable lighting. I finally decided on this clamp desk lamp by Dot Arts for $20. I wanted a lamp with a screw on clamp so that it wouldn't fall off easily. This lamp is the best. It has three different lighting modes with 10 levels of brightness. You can bend it and twist it in any way you'd like to get the best angle. And when you're done, you can fold it out of the way. It charges by USB. It's not very long and only stands at 40 centimeters or about 16 inches. And you will have to be able to reach the cord to turn it on and change the lighting. But the cord is almost five feet long and helps work around any issues with that aspect. Now onto the topic of my storage area. I got rid of all the files I don't need and packed the ones I do away until I need them again. I was also able to distribute a lot of other things taking up space on other shelving. My switch sits comfortably on my desk and takes up minimal space. To better organize the top of the shelving unit, I bought this desktop organizer from Jerry and Maggie for $25. It comes in three colors and the assembly was easy. Because it is made up of two parts, it's also customizable. So for all the items that I thought were necessary, the total was $508.47. If I hadn't purchased a new desk or found something cheaper but similar, I could have saved more money. Now, <laughs> on to the unnecessary items. I wanted a way to store my headphones that was attractive and easily accessible, so I decided to get the Lamical headphone stand for $11.99. It allows me to pick up and drop off my headphones with ease and stores them in a really nice way. My only regret is not getting them in white. I purchased these gold pencil holders to hold my erasable pens and markers from Walmart for less than $5 each. I also purchased this gold magazine holder for $10 to help better organize important files and notebooks without a home. this grid wall organizer from Target for 17 bucks. I've been using it to hold daily reminders and just little notes I need to jot down throughout the day. To help protect my new desk from everyday bumps and spills, I got this leather mouse pad from Isagi for $13.99. It's 23.6 by 13.7. It's also reversible, blush pink on one side and metallic silver on the other. It's waterproof and non-slip, so it's easy to clean. To help with seeing the buttons on my keyboard better in low light, I purchased this keyboard cover in white for $6.99. They also offer other colors like black, purple, pink, blue, and clear. It also softens and mutes the sound of the button clicks. The 
unnecessary items came up to $67.98 total, which makes my overall total $576.45. So I only went over $75, which I'm very surprised at, but yay me. I promise if I do another video like this, I promise to stay in my budget. If you plan on revamping your desk setup, this is definitely something you can do over time. And if you want any suggestions on where to start, I built the list on the order of importance to me and my work style. So feel free to use this as a template if you wish. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment and subscribe for more content like this. Tell me what y'all thought was the best thing that I bought. I, I honestly liked everything. I have no favorite. Maybe, maybe the monitor. Yeah, it's probably the monitor. Until next time, bye.